Welcome to Andy Reads the Bible, where we're reading through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation in one year. I'm your host, Andy Brassfield. Today is January the 12th, and we'll be reading from Genesis 35 through 37 from the Message Translation. Genesis chapter 35. God spoke to Jacob, Go back to Bethel. Stay there and build an altar to the God who revealed himself to you when you were running for your life from your brother Esau. Jacob told his family and all those who lived with him, Throw out all the alien gods you have. Take a good bath and put on clean clothes. We're going to Bethel. I'm going to build an altar there to God who answered me when I was in trouble and has stuck me, stuck with me, everywhere I've gone since. They turned over to Jacob all the alien gods they had been holding on to, along with their lucky charm earrings. Jacob buried them under the oak tree in Shechem. Then they set out. A paralyzing fear descended on all the surrounding villages so that they were unable to pursue the sons of Jacob. Jacob and his company arrived at Luz, that is, Bethel, in the land of Canaan. He built an altar there and named it El Bethel, God of Bethel, because that's where God revealed himself to him when he was running from his brother. And that's when Rebekah's nurse, Deborah, died. She was buried just below Bethel under the oak tree. It was named Alan Bakuth, Weeping Oak. God revealed himself once again to Jacob after he had come back from Paddan Aram and blessed him. Your name is Jacob, Heel, but that's your name no longer. From now on, your name is Israel, God Wrestler. God continued, I am the strong God, have children, flourish. A nation, a whole company of nations will come from you. Kings will come from your loins. The land I gave Abraham and Isaac I now give to you and pass it on to your descendants. And then God was gone, ascended from the place where he had spoken with him. Jacob set up a stone pillar on the spot where God had spoken with him. He poured a drink offering on it and anointed it with oil. Jacob dedicated the place where God had spoken with him, Bethel, God's house. They left Bethel, where they still, they were still quite a ways from Ephrath, when Rachel went into labor, hard, hard labor. When her labor pains were at their worst, the midwife said to her, Don't be afraid. You have another boy. With her last breath, for she was now dying, she named him Ben-Oni, son of my pain. But his father named him Benjamin, son of good fortune. Rachel died and was buried on the road to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. Jacob set up a pillar to mark her grave. It is still there today, Rachel's gravestone. Israel kept on his way and set up camp at Migdal Eder. While Israel was living in that region, Reuben went and slept with his father's concubine, Bilhah, and Israel heard of what he did. There were twelve sons of Jacob, the sons by Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, the sons by Rachel, Joseph, Benjamin, the sons by Bilhah, Rachel's maid, Dan, Naphtali, the sons by Zilpah, Leah's maid, Gad, Asher. These were Jacob's sons born to him in Paddan Aram. Finally, Jacob made it back home to his father Isaac at Mamre in Kiriath Arba, present-day Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had lived. Isaac was now 180 years old. 
Isaac breathed his last and died. An old man full of years, he was buried with his family by his sons Esau and Jacob. Chapter 36 This is the family tree of Esau, who is also called Edom. Esau married women of Canaan, Ada, daughter of Elon, the Hittite, Aholabama, daughter of Anna, and the granddaughter of Zibion the Hivite, and Basemuth, daughter of Ishmael, and sister of Neboeth. Ada gave Esau Eliphaz. Basemuth had rule. Aholibama had Jewish Jalam and Korah. These are the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Esau gathered up his wives, sons and daughters, and everybody in his household, along with all his livestock, all the animals and possessions he had gotten in Canaan, and moved a considerable distance away from his brother Jacob. The brothers had too many possessions to live together in the same place. The land couldn't support their combined herds of livestock. So Esau ended up settling in the hill country of Seir. Esau and Edom are the same. So this is the family tree of Esau, ancestors of the people of Edom, in the hill country of Seir. The names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, son of Esau's wife, Ada, Ruel, son of Esau's wife, Basemuth. The sons of Eliphaz, Timon, Omar, Zepho, Guttam, and Kenaz. Eliphaz also had a concubine, Timna, who had Amalek. These are the grandsons of Esau's wife, Ada. These are the sons of Ruel, Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah, grandsons of Esau's wife, Basemuth. These are the sons of Esau's wife, Aholibama, daughter of Anna, the son of Zibion. She gave Esau his sons, Jewish, or Jaish, uh, Jalem, and Korah. These are the chieftains in Esau's family tree. From the sons of Eliphaz, Esau's firstborn, came the chieftains Taman, Omar, Zepho, Kenaz, Korah, Gatam, and Amalek, the chieftains of Eliphaz in the land of Edom, all of them sons of Ada. From the sons of Esau's son Ruel came the chieftains Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. These are the chieftains of rule in the land of Edom. All these were sons of Esau's wife, Basemuth. These are the sons of Esau's wife, Aholibama, the chieftains, Jeush, Jalam, and Korah, the chieftains born of Esau's wife, Aholibama, daughter of Anna. These are the sons of Esau, that is, Edom, and these are their chieftains. This is... This is the family tree of Seir the Horite, who were native to the land, Lotan, Shobel, Zibion, Ana, Dishon, Ezer, and Dishon. These are the chieftains of the Horites, the sons of Seir in the land of Edom. The sons of Lotan were Hori and Homam, Lotan's sister was Timnah. The sons of Shobel were Alvin, Manahath, Ebel, Shepho, and Onam. The sons of Zibion were Ea and Ana. This is the same Ana who found the hot springs in the wilderness while herding his father Zibion's donkeys. The children of Ana were Dishon, 
or Dishon, how I previously pronounced this spelling, D-I-S-H-O-N, and his daughter, Aholibama. The sons of Dishon were Hemden, Eshben, Ithran, and Karen. The sons of Ezer, Bilhan, Zavon, and Akon. The sons of Dishan, Uz, and Aaron. And these are the Horite chieftains, Lotan, Shobel, Zibion, Ana, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. The Horite chieftains, clan by clan, in the land of Seir. And these are the kings who ruled in Edom before there was a king in Israel. Bela, son of Beor, was the king of Edom. The name of his city was Denabab. Uh, Denaba. When Bela died, Jobab, son of Zerah from Basra, became the next king. When Jobab died, he was followed by Hushan from the land of the Temanites. When Hushan died, he was followed by Hidad, son of Bedad. He was the king who defeated the Midianites in Moab. The name of his city was Avith. When he dad, when Hadad died, Samla of Masrika became became the next king. When Samla died, Shaul from Rehoboth on the river became king. When Shaul died, he was followed by Balhanan, son of Akbor. When Belanon, son of Akbor, died, Hadad became the king. The name of his city was Pau. His wife's name was Mahetabel, daughter of Matred, daughter of Mezahab. Genesis chapter 37. Meanwhile, Jacob had settled down where his father had lived, the land of Canaan. This is the story of Jacob. The story continues with Joseph, 17 years old at the time, helping out his brothers in herding the flocks. These were his half-brothers, actually, the sons of his father's wives, Bilhah and Zilpah. And Joseph brought his father bad reports on them. Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he was the child of his old age. He made them an elaborately he made him an elaborately embroidered coat. When his brothers realized that their father loved him more than them, they grew to hate him. They wouldn't even speak to him. Joseph had a dream. When he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said, listen to this dream I had. We were all out in the field gathering bundles of wheat. All of a sudden, my bundle stood up straight up, and your bundles circled around it and bowed down to mine. His brothers said, So, you're going to rule us? You're going to boss us around? And they hated him more than ever because of his dreams and the way he talked. He had another dream and told this one also to his brothers. I dreamed another dream. The sun and moon and eleven stars bowed down to me. When he told it to his father and brothers, his father reprimanded him. What's with all this dreaming? Am I and your mother and your brothers all supposed to bow down to you? Now his brothers were really jealous, but his father brooded over the whole business. His brothers had gone off to Shechem, where they were pasturing their father's flocks. Israel said to Joseph, Your brothers are with the flocks in Shechem. Come, I want to send you to them. Joseph said, I'm ready. He said, go and see how your brothers and the flocks are doing and bring me back a report. He sent him off from the valley of Hebron to Shechem. A man met him as he was wandering through the fields and asked him, what are you looking for? I'm trying to find my brothers. Do you have any idea where they are grazing their flocks? The man said, they've left here, but I overheard them say, let's go to Dothan. 
So Joseph took off, tracked his brothers down, and found them in Dothan. They spotted him off in the distance. By the time by the time he got to them, they had cooked up a plot to kill him. The brothers were saying, Here comes that dreamer. Let's kill him and throw him into one of these old cisterns. We can say that a vicious animal ate him up. We'll see what his dreams amount to. Reuben heard the brothers talking and intervened to save him. We're not going to kill him. No murderer. No murder. Go ahead and throw him in this cistern here in the wild, but don't hurt him. Reuben planned to go back later and get him out and take him back to his father. When Joseph reached his brothers, they ripped off the fancy coat he was wearing, grabbed him, and threw him into a cistern. The cistern was dry. There wasn't any water in it. Then they sat down to eat their supper. Looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites on their way from Gilead, their camels loaded with spices, ointments, and perfumes to sell in Egypt. Judah said, Brothers, what are we going to get out of killing our brother and concealing the evidence? Let's sell him to the Ishmaelites, but let's not kill him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. By that time, the Midianite traders were passing by. His brothers pulled Joseph out of the cistern and sold him for 20 pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites, who took Joseph with them down to Egypt. Later, Reuben came back and went to the cistern. No Joseph. He ripped off... He ripped his clothes in despair. Beside himself, he went to his brothers. The boy's gone. What am I going to do? They took Joseph's coat, butchered a goat, and dipped the coat in the blood. They took the fancy coat back to their father and said, We found this. Look it over. Do you think it's your son's coat? He recognized it at once. My son's coat, a wild animal, has eaten him. Up, has eaten him. Joseph torn limb from limb. Jacob tore his clothes in grief, dressed in rough burlap, and mourned his son a long, long time. His sons and daughters tried to comfort him, but he refused their comfort. I'll go to my grave mourning my son. Oh, how his father wept for him. In Egypt, the Midianites sold Joseph to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, manager of his household affairs. And that concludes today's reading. So we get into the story of Joseph in uh, in the latter parts there, but back in chapter 35, I was a little bit surprised to learn that Jacob's family had alien gods. They had to get rid of them, but I was surprised in the first place that they had them. I mean, this is Jacob. And Jacob's family had alien gods. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying this out of judgment. I'm just surprised. And it reminds me that even though Jacob was a good man, and he was God-fearing, obviously God-fearing man, his family somehow had alien gods. Why? Was it Jacob's fault? I don't know. It's a very curious thing. And, of course, the story of Joseph, if you spend any time in Sunday school as a child, you've heard this story many, many times. And it's such a sad thing to think that what these brothers did to their dad, how he was grieving so much because of their hatred toward Joseph. But then again, he did show favoritism. So as a father, it's a good idea to try and be fair and equitable with all your children. Yeah, just something to think about. Today's episode is sponsored by Brassy Bees, where we rescue honeybees. Don't spray bees, call me. To learn more about Brassy Bees honeybee removal services, visit us on the web at BrassyBees.com. That's B-R-A-S-S-Y-B-E-E-S dot com. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, your favorite podcasting ad, uh, app. 
Apple or Android, search for Andy Reads the Bible. Our podcast page is located at andybible.libson.com. Thank you for listening. God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow.